There's a narration that three different people came to an Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah and all three of them had different complaints. One of them said, oh Imam, we're suffering from poverty. The other one said, oh Imam, we're suffering from drought. The other one said, oh Imam, we're trying to have children. And to all three of those people, and Imam Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said, say astaghfirullah, say astaghfirullah, say astaghfirullah. Say I seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when his students asked him, why is it that you said to all three people, say astaghfirullah? He said, because if you look at the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal says about Nuh alayhi salam, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا I said to them, seek your Lord's forgiveness, for indeed He is truly most forgiving. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا If you do that, He will shower you with abundant rain. وَيُمْدِدُكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ He will supply you with wealth and with children. وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ وَيَجْعَلْ لَكُمْ أَنْهَارًا And He will give you gardens as well as rivers. And so istighfar, seeking Allah's forgiveness, collectively is the key to all goodness in this life. But more than anything that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for of this world, it's also our path back to paradise. When Adam alayhi salam, our father, and Hawa, Eve, left paradise, they turned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. And Allah Azza wa Jal inspired them with the words, Rabbana ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ O oh, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. If you don't forgive us and have mercy upon us, then we will certainly be amongst the losers. Now here's the thing, Allah gave them the words of forgiveness. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the best way to seek forgiveness. And that in and of itself is a sign that Allah wants to forgive you. And I want you to think about the most forgiving person you have ever known in your life. And think about how quickly they forgive you the moment that you apologize. How quickly they relinquish a grudge, even if they had one, as soon as you say, I'm sorry. And those people are nothing compared to al ghafur the off-forgiving. All you have to do is say, I'm sorry, and know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always willing to accept your apology. Now, istighfar, seeking forgiveness, is just one part of our wholesome package of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's essentially an admission of shortcoming that is verbalized. So istighfar is specific to the tongue. Nadm, which is regret, the Prophet ﷺ said, and nadmu tawba, that regret is tawbah, it is repentance. Nadm is how you feel. It's the true remorse that you have on the inside. Istighfar is what you say. Astaghfirullah, I seek your forgiveness, O Allah. Tawbah is what you do. It's the full repentance of turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This basically forms not just the beginning of the history of mankind when Adam alayhi salam and Eve leave paradise, but it forms the basis of your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So at the very beginning, Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad rahimahullah was asked, what's more important, to do istighfar or to do tasbih? For us as human beings, is it more important for us to seek Allah's forgiveness or to glorify His perfection? Now obviously both are important, but he said, that think about a garment that you have and there's a stain on that garment. So if you got a white thobe and you got a coffee stain on it, what do you do with that garment? The priority is not to embellish that garment. The priority is to remove the stain. And so he said, astaghfirullah, repentance, seeking Allah's forgiveness is removing the stain. All the other forms of dhikr are embellishing the garment. And so they're both important, but you have to get back to your origin and remove the stain on your heart and then turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ was so comprehensive. In one authentic hadith, when someone would embrace Islam, the first thing the Prophet ﷺ would teach him is salah. And then the Prophet ﷺ would teach him the following dua. Allahumma khirli, warhamni, wahdini, wa'afini, warzuqni. So it's such a comprehensive dua, it's a simple sentence. Oh Allah, forgive me and have mercy on me, and guide me, and give me good health, and provide for me. So the Prophet ﷺ said, this is a dua that you should say to keep yourself busy with in the very beginning of your Islam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you never get past seeking Allah's forgiveness. There's always going to be a reason for seeking Allah's forgiveness. And that's not just because you are going to keep sinning. It's because you're never going to do good enough to meet what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for you. 
And that's the istighfar of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. The istighfar of feeling naqs, of feeling deficiency. Now think about it in, in the capacity of everything that we've spoken about. You know how perfect Allah is. You've praised Allah for all of His blessings upon you. And you know that no matter what you do in return, you're never going to do quite enough. And so you always feel a sense of regret. And that's why when you finish salah, you didn't do anything wrong. You did the best thing you could possibly be doing when you prayed. But you say, Astaghfirullah, 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 right away. Why? Because perhaps some of my salah was lost. I, maybe I was distracted. And even if I wasn't distracted, then surely I have not repaid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his favors upon me. And so everyone is in a state of istighfar. Some are seeking forgiveness for the deficiency in their good. Some are seeking forgiveness for their sins. And Imam Sufyan al-Thawri rahimahullah, he said, that's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises, al-mustaghfirina bil-ashar, those who are seeking Allah's forgiveness in the last part of the night, that he's speaking to two different categories of people who are both making istighfar. He said, you have those who wake up in the very last part of the night to seek forgiveness with a small prayer. And then you have the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who have already prayed a portion of the night and they're seeking forgiveness at the end of their worship. They're both praiseworthy, but he says their istighfar is not the same. You have the istighfar of the lovers and you have the istighfar of the sinners. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, of course, is the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after a long night of prayer, he would still seek Allah's forgiveness. And he said sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that, O oh people, I seek Allah's forgiveness at least a hundred times a day. And Imam al nawi rahimahullah, he said, that's the minimum from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You can find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam in a single gathering, seeking Allah's forgiveness more than a hundred times. But he's saying that I seek Allah's forgiveness at least a hundred times a day. What does that mean for the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? And it wasn't just with one word or one phrase. You see, astaghfirullah. You see, astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek Allah's forgiveness and I repent to him. You see, rabbi khfirli, my Lord, forgive me. Or what Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying throughout a gathering. Rabbi khfirli wa tub alayya. Innaka anta tawwabur rahim. My Lord, forgive me and have mercy upon me. You are the acceptor of repentance. You are the most merciful. And the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever says, Astaghfirullah al Azim, Alladhi la ilaha illa hu, Al Hayyu al Qayyum wa Atubu ilayh. I seek the forgiveness of Allah, the Most Mighty, whom there is none worthy of worship except Him, the Ever Living, the Ever Eternal and I repent to him. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says this form of istighfar, Allah will forgive him even if he had deserted the ranks of the Muslim's army. And that is, of course, one of the most severe sins to flee the battlefield. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying that to repent to Allah wholesomely in this way forgives you even for that. He said, وسلم, even when you sit together, he said, when people sit and they speak in a gathering, and they end that gathering by saying, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Glory is to you, O Allah, and all praise is to you. We bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship but you, and we seek your forgiveness and we repent to you. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ghufira lahu ma kana fi majlisihi dhak. That anything that was said in that gathering will be forgiven bi idnillahi ta'ala. And he said the best form of istighfar, the best form of seeking forgiveness, it's called Sayyid al-Istighfar, the master of seeking forgiveness. If you say it in the evening and you die, or you say it in the morning and you die, the Prophet ﷺ said, you are certainly from the people of Jannah. Allahumma anta rabbi, la ilaha illa ant, khalaqtani wa ana abduk, wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'dika ma stata'atu, a'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'atu, Oh Allah, you are my Lord. There is no God but you. You created me and I am your slave. And I am abiding by your promise and your covenant to the greatest extent possible. I admit to you your blessings upon me and I admit to you my shortcomings. So forgive me because no one forgives sins except for you. So you have an admission 
of all the good that Allah has given to you and an admission of the times that you've fallen short in your response. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if you say that and you die, you will be from the people of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. So again, when it comes to istighfar, do it after you commit a sin. Do it even when you think about something that's sinful. Do it after you do a good deed out of feeling a sense of deficiency. Do it when someone praises you, as we learn as well, that when someone says something about you, seek Allah's forgiveness because you know that there are certain things about you that are not necessarily what others may think of you. And when you feel stress, Prophet وسلم, is narrated to have said, مَن لَزِمَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَهُ مِنْ كُلِّ ضِيقٍ مَخْرَجًا وَمِنْ كُلِّ هَمٍ فَرَجًا وَرَزَقَهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِدُ That whoever is consistent with seeking Allah's forgiveness, Allah will appoint for him a way out of every distress and a relief from every anxiety, and Allah will provide for him from where he would have never thought he would be provided from. And you find from the Prophet Sallallahu something so beautiful. He says, إِنَّهُ لَا يُغَانُ عَلَى قَلْبِي So you know, sometimes my heart feels foggy. I feel like there is a fog over my heart. And so I seek Allah's forgiveness in a day a hundred times. Istighfar is what removes the fog. It's what provides clarity. It's what removes all of the stress and the anxiety. And it's what connects us to the most perfect, even when we know how imperfect we are. اللهم اغفر لي وارحمني واهدني وعافني وارزقني استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا اله الا هو الحي القيوم واتوب اليه رب اغفر لي رب اغفر لي اللهم إني ظلمت نفسي ظلما كثيرا ولا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت فاغفر لي مغفرة من عندك وارحمني إنك أنت الغفور الرحيم استغفر الله واتوب اليه اللهم اغفر لي ذنبي ووسع لي في داري وبارك لي فيما رزقتني رب اغفر لي وتب علي انك انت التواب الغفور اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا وآتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم اغفر لي خطيئتي وجهلي وإسرافي في أمري وما أنت أعلم به مني اللهم اغفر لي جدي وهزلي وخطئي وعمدي وكل ذلك عندي اللهم اغفر لي ما قدمت وما أخرت وما أسررت وما أعلنت وما أنت أعلم به مني أنت المقدم والمؤخر وأنت على كل شيء قدير